When we are building custom car audio builds and doing upholstery for custom interiors, we have many different shapes that we create that fit up against each other. Now, because we need to eventually upholster these different pieces, we need to have a gap for the clearance between them to account for that upholstery material. But how do we measure exactly what that gap needs to be? Today, my friends, I wanna show you guys a new tool that I'm super excited about because I feel it will change the way that we do upholstery work forever. Now, in my opinion, the mark of a truly perfect build is how perfect the gaps are for the transitions between materials. If the gap is too loose, this is what happens. Your panels, they just, they just easily fall apart. And if your gap is far too tight, a lot of times you want to use these panels for access to some hidden bolts and things like that. But on this example, uh, I can't even separate them. And you can see when I press this together, it messed up the vinyl because this gap was far too tight. And another reason the gap is a very important thing to get right is once these are upholstered, there's no going back. We can't rip this upholstery material off and redo the gap. It's just not going to happen. We'll have to spend a ton of time remaking these shapes. So how can we perfectly determine the gap that we need? Well, my friends, to solve this issue, I've spent a bunch of time prototyping and designing a new tool. And it's not a Ninja Star, but it's the new Car Audio Fabrication Material Gap Gauge set. So here's the material gap gauge set, and I'm gonna explain the details in a second here. But first of all, why is it so difficult to determine this gap size anyway? I mean, after all, can't we just use rules of thumb like vinyl is a certain thickness and carpet is a certain thickness? Well, that kind of is what we used to do. We would say, okay, vinyl is about 1 32nd of an inch, and carpet, that's usually about 3 seconds of an inch. So if you add the two, that's 4 seconds, which is 2 16 or one eighth. Your gap needs to be one eighth of an inch. The problem with this rule of thumb ideology is a couple of things. First of all, you have to remember all of these complicated fractions and sometimes they can be confusing and it's easy to make a mistake. Second of all, we can't use a rule of thumb because materials measure at different thicknesses. For example, this is carpet and you can see it's fairly thin, but then you can see that this carpet it's a little bit different, but it is much, much thicker. An example of using the rules of thumb is this panel right here. I made this a long, long time ago. You can see it has the original CAF logo on it, but I used a 1 8 inch gap, which should have been right for this, but you can see that it pops apart really, really easily. We would have wanted a little bit tighter of a fit. We need a more accurate way. So couldn't we just use something like, I don't know, these digital calipers? I mean, after all, we can just take our two materials like this, we can sandwich them, and we can just get a measurement, right? Well, the problem with doing this, and I've tried this many times before, is you don't really have a consistent reading because your reading depends on how much force you're going to push the jaw of these together. You can't really get an accurate feel for how tight of a gap that is going to be. And again, you end up with gaps that are far too tight or far too loose. So that's why I designed these, the material gap gauge set. You can see that this gives us nine different slots that we can use in order to measure the combination of materials that we're going to use to wrap our pieces. Let me show you you exactly how this is done. So first of all, we need to select our two materials. Let's say we're gonna use this red vinyl on the inside of our insert and the gray on the outside. What we wanna do is just take the two materials and stack them together and you can see that the material gap gauge has different numbers on it. Here's number nine, eight, and seven. And what we wanna do is just start stepping through the sizes, starting at the largest and working our way down. So all of these gaps are obviously far too large. Let's try number six. We probably could have just started with this piece here, but I'm trying to give you guys a full example. We're starting to get a little bit more resistance. Number four, that's still a little loose. We'll continue to number three here and now I'm getting a nice amount of resistance and see how I can get the material all the way up into the jaw. That's what we want. We wanna go for the lowest number that we can still get the material sandwich all the way up into the jaw. That's tight enough that I'm thinking, I don't think I'm gonna, yeah, I can barely even get this in here. And even if I do, I'm really gonna have to force it to go all the way up into the jaw. This gap is far too tight, but this number three gap 
is perfect. So we've determined that a number three size gap is what we want for this particular combination of materials. And as a quick side note, this isn't only for vinyl and carpet. You could use it for things like tweed. You could use it for headliner materials. And unfortunately I don't have any here, but you could use it for actual real leather to any different upholstery material. So we know we need a number three gap, but what does that mean? Well, my friends, I've teamed up with my friends over at Mobile Solutions to turn this into a tray because that number three, that is really important when it comes to actually machining our pieces using a router bit. This tray allows us to organize and store the different material gap gauges and it features these two things. I'll get to these in a little bit. Also, as a quick side note, for those of you that are new, Mobile Solutions is a different company than my company, Car Audio Fabrication. Mobile Solutions, they offer a full line of different router bits and router accessories, different fabrication tools, and all of their own tools like this tray and all the different templates that you see on my wall. Those are all manufactured here in the United States. So it made sense for me to team up with them for manufacturing this product so that we can have this made here in the US. So back to how we use this. So this is a 1 seconds inch rabbiting bit and it's not too important to really even worry about the fractions here because I've made it really easy for you guys. The fact that we know that this fits into a number three slot tells us everything we need to know. It means that we need to make three passes with this router bit. The way we do this is really simple. Let's say that we have our example shape here. And if you are new here, the way that I made this shape, I've shown this several times on the channel, is I start with a template shape. And then on the inside, I router out the male shape and I'm going to save that shape. The reason I save it is I'm going to use it to make my inside male piece. Now, right now it's a quarter inch smaller because I used a quarter inch flush trim bit. So I'm going to oversize it using a quarter inch bearing on a flush trim bit just like this. And then I can transfer those shapes to thicker wood like this. And now you can see I have an insert that is size on size. So now that we have this, we can take this inside male shape and I've loaded in the 1 seconds inch rabbit bit that is part of this set. What this bit is going to do is the bearing here is going to ride against this outside surface, but you can see that the cutting flute is 1 32nd of an inch away from the edge of this bearing. So it's going to cut into the wood that amount. Now, as you guys know, on a table mounted router lift like this, I can raise the bit up and down out of the table. And I've currently set it at a point that the top of the cutting flute is just past the halfway point of the thickness of this wood. You don't have to be completely accurate. You just wanna make sure that you're over the halfway point. I'm now going to make pass number one. So that was pass number one, and you can see it leaves us with this step right here. Now, if we had measured our material all the way down to slot number one, we would be done and we could move on to the next step. But in this case, remember, we're in number three. So what I need to do is flip this over and do pass number two, and then I'll flip it over a third time for pass number three. So it's really simple. Whatever slot number you end up in, that's how many times you need to make a cutting pass. And just remember, after each cutting pass, you're going to flip it over because what that does is it allows the bearing to now ride against that surface that you just cut and cut into the material once again. So we've completed our three cutting passes so we can now move on to the next step and that is just to use a flush trim bit to get rid of that little groove. This is simple enough. This is a flush trim bit where the cutting flute is even with these bearings. And I just have the bearings riding against our inside surface so I can remove that a little leftover edge. So now thanks to the material gap gauge, we've created a perfect gap between these two panels. It's a number three gap, which is perfect for these upholstery materials. And you guys might recognize these materials because that's what I used on this recent project here on the channel for this down firing subwoofer enclosure. This is what I would consider a perfect gap because if I try to pull this out with my hands, it's pretty tight. It's not going to easily pop out when we don't want it to. But if I use a pry tool, I can just carefully come around the inside here and pop this out. And you can see it's not so tight that it damaged the vinyl. The vinyl looks perfect, but it is tight enough that we have that nice positive locating feel. And that is a gap that you can tell just by looking at it. Really nice interior 
type upholstery work. Now for you more advanced guys, stick with me because I have a couple tech tips for you about increasing the efficiency even more using this tool. But I did wanna let you know that this is available in a couple of different options. You can get the three material gap gauges together or you can get them as part of this whole kit that includes the tray and the bit. Now the next question is, what are these little guys for? These are for verifying our gap. Let's say that we took our material sandwich and we measured and we need a number five. And let's say that we're making our cutting passes using the router bit of course, and we're on cut number three, and then our phone rings and we get distracted or somebody asks us a question, we get pulled away. Not to worry because we can use these to measure the gap that we were currently at. We'll take our two pieces and set them like so, kind of hang them off the edge of the table, and we're going to push one of these on each side so that they're at an even number. This was that example piece that I made and we know that it was number three, so the largest I can get between the gap is the number three on each side and you can see that these are labeled with the numbers. So we know we are on pass three and we just need to make two more passes coming up to pass five. Now for those of you that are a little bit more advanced and might have a full router bit collection like this, you might have this bit tray kit here. This has a wide selection of different rabbiting bit sizes. And what you could do with this kit is let's say you take your measurement and you end up in slot number six right here, which if we look at the measurement, it's three sixteenths of an inch. So all we have to do is we have to find that measurement on this tray, this is the 3 16 inch rabbiting bit. We could load this in and what that allows us to do is we only have to make the one pass with that much larger bit and then we can go to our flush trim bit. The advantage here obviously being we only had to make one pass instead of using this bit where we'd have to make six passes. For those of you guys that are a shop and are all about efficiency and time tracking, you definitely want to have access to this kit if possible. If you are a DIYer or if time isn't super important, this kit is super powerful with just this one 30 seconds inch bit. It just takes you a little bit more time, but you're obviously going to get the same result. Another advanced tip for you professionals out there that are using CNC machines to make your builds, having this tool is a really good design aid because now during the design process, I could take something like our upholstery materials that we're going to use, I can sandwich them and check that gap, and now I can plan for that gap in the design phase while I'm still on the computer. I don't have to machine everything and then take it over to the router table and do additional handwork to get that gap perfect. I can plan for it completely in the design phase. So there we have it, my friends, the material gap gauge set. I've put a bunch of time into designing and testing this tool, and I'm really enjoying using it, and I hope you will too. I've been using it on a couple of projects behind the scenes, and I just have to tell you, it is so satisfying, that nice positive kind of click feeling you get when everything comes together and those gaps fit perfectly. And it's so nice to have more of a confident feeling that those gaps are going to be perfect before I waste a bunch of a time doing upholstery and then finding out that the pieces don't go together quite right. Links, of course, for more information about this toolkit are down in the video description. A special thanks to Mobile Solutions for teaming up with me on this to help manufacture this tool. And of course, thank you guys for watching. I look forward to using this on more projects here on the channel coming up soon.